all by <laughs> weird <laughs> I don't know what happened to my Celine Dion voice it's not working this morning Perhaps I should adjust my singing expectation for 6.49 in the morning. Um, I was trying to sing All By Myself by Celine Dion, and perhaps I should not do that. Um, but good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Coffee Talk. Uh, it is Friday, it's very exciting. What's going on with my hair? Um, last night, a couple of things. Before I tell you about dinner last night, I we went out to dinner, and in the car ride home, I was like, oh, my stomach hurts. And Michael was like, it does? And I was like, can you drive faster? <laughs> and he was like, all right. So he gets me in the driveway. I run in, my babysitter's like, hey, did you guys have a good time? I'm like, can't talk, can't talk. <laughs> Run into the bathroom. And then, buenos dias. Did you ever see Dumb and Dumber when uh, Jeff Daniels is in the bathroom and literally his asshole falls out into the toilet? Like, there's a good chance he's dying, right? You're 25, Macy? Oh, my God. Um, literally, I was like, I am on my way to see the Lord. This is me. I'm here I go <laughs> I am on the path train to the Lord yeah I thought I was dying I was like seriously uh, just let me see my kids one more day oh man anyway I woke up much better this morning but yikes um, so anyway I wanted to share a story with you guys um, because I think it's an interesting, yeah, right? No calories. Woo. <laughs> Carrie Lee, that's funny. She said squeaker. <laughs> I am too immature to see a word like squeaker. Uh, when he opens the window and he's like. <laughs> Y'all, I am super, super immature. Just so you know. Like, I cannot handle any poop jokes oh my god it's so funny to me all right so anyway I wanted to tell you about dinner last night I'm like scared to drink my coffee phrase gonna take me home to the Lord I'm telling you all right so last night okay first of all <laughs> okay guys stop typing about scenes about poop because we will not get anywhere if y'all keep doing that to me okay yesterday um taylor and i were um on instagram just being silly doing instagram videos right and um somebody messaged me on instagram now typically typically i don't answer a ton of um a ton of messages on instagram because I just get so many, like I try sometimes, but like whatever. Anyway, this message came up and I happened to see it. It was from this woman and she was like, listen, we're in town. My daughter's moving to Birmingham. We would like to go get a couple more of your books to be signed. Do you know where we can go? So I wrote back and said, there's a Barnes and Noble at the summit. They have autographed copies of my book. So she was like, any chance that, uh, we could see you for a selfie and I don't know like why I answered her because I typically don't because you know you remember what happened to Selena her damn president of her fan club shot her so I try to try not to tell people where I'm gonna be but I was like well it's date night and we'll be at Gianmarco's if you happen to be there so anyway um We go out last night and this woman and her daughter and her um, and her friend are there and they're lovely. And I sign their books and we end up talking and um, and uh, they're they're lovely. They're they're in from Baton Rouge and they're uh, telling me about their daughter daughter's 
new job and blah, blah, blah. And so anyway, um, Michael and I go sit down after 30 minutes. I spend 30 minutes with them and then Michael and I go sit down and there was something about them, something about the conversation that didn't feel finished to me. It felt like, um, I don't know, like they needed me or something. Like, and I said to Michael, do you think it would be weird if I asked these three people to join us for dinner? And he was like this, no. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, I know you want to. And I was like, I just feel like there's a reason that I met them. I meet people all the time and I don't always have this feeling. Let me just say that. It was something that I felt, right? So Michael was like, all right, go ahead. So meanwhile, Michael's trying to get the table changed from a table for two to a table for five. And I go back over to them and I say, hey, hi, me again. <laughs> um, any chance you guys wanna join us for dinner? And they so politely did the whole like, no, of course not, it's date night, go, go eat. And I was like, are you sure? Cause I really feel like we could like, you know, need to talk or something. Sorry, my sister trying to call me during coffee talks. Very rude. Um, so, um, so anyway, um, then they were like, the, the mom was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna have the chance to have dinner with you and Michael, I'm, getting, I'm going. And her, they all got up and came over. So we ended up sitting together talking, sort of catching up. She wanted to ask some questions and about us and Michael and you know I think she got to see a side of me that like I don't put on coffee talk I you know I talked about some of my fears and some things that I you know struggle with and anyway long story short um we start talking and talking and dinner goes long I mean we didn't leave there till like 11 11 15 but it turns out that her daughter is young She's 22 and she wants to get married. And this beautiful woman, by the way, beautiful, um, married her love that she met when she was 15. Small town girl, met the boy, fell in love, and like has had a beautiful life with him, but only knows him, only knows that life in that small town with that boy, right? Um, and, I, and I think that the mother was struggling with how to guide her daughter, right? Because um, of course we want our children to make good decisions, but there are some life experiences that we have had um, that we know what that path is, you know, we know what that life experience is, right? And I could see that this mama was struggling with how to guide her daughter because you don't ever want to be the mother that says, don't marry the love of your life. Don't, you know, get married and live in a small town so I can be with you forever and ever and ever. Like, I mean, there's a little bit more to it and I don't want to, um, I don't want to put this girl's business out there too much. But anyway, I could tell that the whole reason that we were sitting there was because this mama needed another voice to speak to her daughter. And I didn't try to change this girl's mind. But she believes at 22 that she, would, she is ready to get married. She's graduating from college in May. Now, I understand that there are exceptions to every rule. There are people out there who got married at 22 and are now 55 and still happily married 30 something years later. Okay, I get it. Donna got it. There are plenty of people who can make it work, but when you got married at 22, it was not 2017. Life is different. And what 
young people don't understand is you have to get up every single day and wife your husband. It is a verb. You do not get up. You don't get to get up and decide you're not wifing today. Your husband has a drinking problem. You got to wife him through it. You catch your husband with another woman. You have a responsibility to wife him through it. Your husband loses his job, spends all your money, doesn't pay his taxes, hates your mother. You got to wife him through it. And at 22 years old, you can barely life through life. That's all I'm saying. Wifing is hard. It is hard. It is a verb. You have to wife him through it. There are so many times that I have looked at Michael and thought, I, am res I resent the fact that I have to wife you through this. This is your shit and your mistake, but I have to get up and wife you through it because I made vows and because I said I would and because I promised and all that shit. So here I am wifing you through it. And I was in my 30s. Like I had more life lived behind me, okay? So what I said was this mama needed a voice. She needed a mama tribe and she needed somebody to say what she was not brave enough to say. That's all I'm saying. So I said, um, I said to this young girl, I'm not going to try to change your mind. If you love him, you know love. We can recognize love at 22. No question. Do me a favor. We exchanged information and I said, I want you to write for me. She's a writer. I want you to write for me what you believe being a wife means. And don't try to romanticize it. Don't try to say what you think I want to hear. I want you to explain to me what you think the responsibilities of being a wife are. Because this child may have true understanding of being a wife, wifing them through it, right? Or she may think, she may start listing shit like laundry, dinner, and I will know this baby is not ready. Because if the hardest thing you're doing in your marriage is laundry, honey, will you take a sister wife? Will you take a sister wife? Um, my husband, yeah, he's got a husband me plenty of times. He's got a husband me, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. I am not a feminist or maybe I am. I don't really even know hundred percent what that means. Um, but I think it is harder to wife a man through life than it is to husband a woman. I said it, take that for whatever it is. At least in my in my experience, that's how I feel. Um, again, there are exceptions to every rule. Okay, um, there are people who get married young and stay married forever. Of course, uh, of course, there are exceptions. And I love that you guys want to share that, and you should share that. If you are an exception to the rule, you should let people know. Hey, I got married super young. And we are still making it work. But it does not mean that we don't have an obligation to let these babies know. Wifing is hard. And I get it. When you are saving yourself for a boy you love and you're 22 and you've been waiting a long time and sex is, you're so curious about it and you really want to like get into that. I get it. I do. All I'm saying is the whole point of Coffee Talk is to just give people things to think about. And I felt that this mama needed another mama voice because she wanted to say a lot and she was not brave enough to say it. Not because she can't speak to her daughter, but because admitting how hard it is was almost admitting that she at times regretted her own decision. And I don't believe that she did big picture, but I think there are times that she was like, I, wow, 
you know, it's real. Um, again, I love the fact that you guys are sharing all of the exceptions. People who got married at 16 and 18 are still together 40 years later. Exception, not the rule. Uh, and, and, and we have an obligation to let these young people know that that is the exception because if they believe that it, anyway, you know what? I felt it and I knew that this mama needed help. And listen, you know, I don't even know that I helped. I honestly don't. But I think I gave the young girl something to think about. Um, Michael and I lived together before we got married and thank gosh for that because I, you know, we worked out a lot of kinks, but I think sometimes kids especially need to hear things from people that are not their mothers and not their fathers because that's why Coffee Talk is so interesting to me that young people listen to it because I never would have done that, okay? I never would have listened to a, an old lady at 40 talking about, girl, wife it is hard. You don't even know how hard wife it is. I'd have been like, this chick, first of all, this chick needs to brush her teeth before she speaks to anybody in the morning. Second of all, she needed to change out her damn pajamas. And third of all, why does she drink so much damn coffee? That would have been my attitude. Yet there are 21-year-olds, 25-year-olds who listen to to um, to us every day and it blows my mind. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you that sometimes you are put in positions not because you need it, but because someone else needs it. And even if you feel like, I don't really know what I'm doing here, go with it. Because a lot of times we wake up in the morning, not because we need another day, but because somebody else needs us. I say it all the time. We are here to love each other. We are called to love each other, to be there for each other, to step outside our comfort zones for each other. And that is what I hope that I did last night. And um, like this Michaela, 24, starts her day with me, blows my mind. <laughs> blows it. Wide open. Uh, 31. Yeah. I not. Nope. Negative. Ghost Rider would not have listened. Um, I love you guys so much. And I'm just so lucky to have you. I'm so um, blessed and highly favored that I get to spend my mornings with you every day. Um, I never take it for granted. Um, and I just want you to know how incredibly special you are and how loved you are and how appreciated you are and how thankful I am that we're friends and that I get to see you every day. I'm just so glad you're here. I'm so glad it's Friday. I love you, I love you. Let's celebrate the Wounded Warriors because they got $300 from us last month and that is dope. Um, there's a share button right there. If y'all would just take one second and share the video, I would so appreciate it. Tell somebody needs to hear this. And um, if you wanna find me on Instagram, um, it's Jamie, J-A-I-M-E P Sullivan. We have a lot of fun on Instagram, but it's very irreverent. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. I love you so much today. Have a great day.